Okay, I'm going to show you how to set up your complementary and your analogous color schemes, but again, you will need to refer to the PowerPoint um, to look at the color wheels because you have lots of options and I don't want you necessarily to just copy the color schemes that I choose. Um, although it's fine to use the particular color pairs that I'm using, um, I want you to make your own color scheme. So complementary colors are the contrasting colors that are opposite each other on the color wheel. Um, and that's not just an arbitrary arrangement. They're arranged that way. Um, the thing that is more important than just remembering like, oh, they're opposite each other, is that they do not share a common hue. That is why they provide the most visual contrast. I picked up my brush and I'm not really sure why. Um, I'm going to choose blue and orange. So blue is um, a primary color, as you know, and uh, orange is made from red and yellow. So it does not have any blue in it, and that is why they are a complementary pair. You can see in, um, you see in like sports logos and things like that, a lot of sports teams use these complementary color pairs. So I'm using a dark blue as my dark value. Remember our map that we made? Um, and so you should keep that and reference that. But um, feel free to kind of work off of the map as long as you are keeping in mind that you want to create variation, uh, create a variety of values. And I um, didn't really like that the number on the back of his jersey was reversed, so I'm simplifying it and making it one shape. And remember, I'm using um, my brush tip, so you have a black brush tip pen, and you may not necessarily use it for this project, um, but I did want to show you the proper way to use it. So what I'm doing is I'm filling in all the spaces that would be sort of the segments that would refer to the parts of this figure's body. And I'm working with my darkest value first, which is the blue. Remember that you don't have to use these particular markers and you don't have to use color, um, watercolors or paints, but you are welcome to. <clears throat> so I'm working off of that map, but I am also just thinking in terms of breaking up these shapes and making them different colors. And which shapes do I want to have the dark values? And um, I can show you adding like shadows and stuff like that here. Or there. I'm not going to do the whole picture. Um, you'll see right at, you'll see in the introduction, or you might have already watched the introduction video, so you'll see these finished, but I want to show you just to make sure you understand that you're making three different separate color schemes. So we're using versions, variations of orange and blue, and we're only using orange and blue in this. This is a blue that has a little bit of green in it, but if you think about what orange has in it, orange has red in it, and green is the complement of red. So we're still sticking with our, <clears throat> sticking in our color scheme. So why do we you why would we want to use a color scheme like this? Like why would designers use complementary colors? Well, um, physiologically, these colors vibrate against each other and create kind of um, visual, like literally visual excitement in our brains when we see them next to each other. Um, so that's one reason why designers use them, because it's exciting to see. Uh, contrast, just in general, draws our attention. 
So the, that would be, those would be reasons why we would, if we want something to be seen and remembered and to stand out. But they can also be very, you know, because they are strongly contrasting, they're not the most soothing or harmonious colors. So you might not want to use them. You know, you might want to might not want to have a blue wall and an orange wall in your bedroom, for example. Or maybe you do. Okay, now I'm going to start adding the orange. To me, the, the orange is sort of a, this orange is kind of my mid-tone. And be careful. Even if you're just using a paintbrush instead of the marker brush tips, be careful about this going back and forth and using a lot of pressure. Just use a delicate touch. Because you also don't want to blend these together too much. When you blend contrasting colors together, you get mud because they cancel each other out and they create a neutral that's not a very nice looking neutral. There's better ways to get neutral colors. So just move through your picture assigning light values, dark values, and mid-tone values keeping it versions of blue and orange. If that's the pair you're using, violet and yellow is another complementary color pair. Green and red is your other choice for complementary color pairs. And remember that it's versions of those colors as well. Okay. Um, <clears throat> you can use the water with this that um, I used in the monochromatic color scheme, but beware, you know, in the, when I use the water in the monochromatic color scheme, it was fine if they all blended together because they were all blues. But if you start mixing, if you get areas where the blue and the orange mix together, it's going to create a brown or like a greenish black that doesn't look very nice. So just beware of that. Okay, so um, I had, you know, transferred the paper, transferred my image using the same technique that I showed you before. But um, in the video where I showed you how to um, reverse it, so I kind of got, I kind of killed two birds with one stone. So I'll kind of show you when I transferred this image, I actually reversed it. And I, as I traced over this, I was able to get this. So that was, I thought, kind of a, a time saving thing. This is going to be my last one. This is going to be the analogous color scheme. Now, the complementary color scheme is a pair of colors, it's variations off of two hues orange and blue. Okay. An analogous color scheme isn't limited to just two color pairs because you're basically choosing a section of the color wheel and you're choosing colors that are next to each other. So because they're next to each other, they share a common hue. Red between on a color wheel between red and orange are the mixtures of those colors. And so they have something in common, they harmonize with each other. What I'm going to do is I'm going to choose the analogous color scheme from the boating party, which is the example that you have um, in your PowerPoint. And that would be yellow, uh, blues, and greens. So green harmonizes the blue and the yellow because blue and yellow mix to make green. So obviously yellow is going to be my lightest value and this is a very grassy green yellow that I've chosen. And I actually like the way that the pencil is 
is blending in with the marker and making it almost um, a little bit like a shad, a little bit sh like shading at the edge of these shapes. And again, you'll see all of it finished in the, you, you saw all of it finished in the introduction. So I'm just showing you kind of how I'm mapping out the colors. Now this is going to be more different hues, I guess. There were fewer, fewer hues to work with in the other two, right? You started out with one, now going to um, three and variations of yellow, blue, and green. So I'm trying to kind of simplify some things. And keep this green, this darker green, sort of functions as a kind of neutral. Putting similar, putting the variations of the colors pretty close to each other so that we don't get, we don't want things to get too broken up. You know, we want to, don't want them to look too um, disjointed. And I would probably also use green watercolor in the background. Okay. Um, you'll realize that I, of course, uh, recorded the introduction video last. Okay, let's keep, let's do blue on the pants. I want you to see all, I want you to see me add at least one shade of each of the hues that I choose. Choose, hues that you choose, chose. So the hue is like the basic way of saying a color, you know, like yellow. And then the shades would be variations of yellow. If you wanna get real technical, there's also tones of color. And that really just depends on whether you're talking about making it lighter or darker muted or more saturated. I do like that since I redid a reverse, now my number is the right way. So you see how in some of the other, or in some of the other, in the other color scheme pieces, the other versions, I kind of would break up and make these different colors. And I'm trying to kind of keep the same colors a little bit closer together because the whole goal here with an analogous color scheme is to create harmony. You don't actually want it to look, you want it to look soothing, peaceful, unified. Okay, so I think that's enough. Maybe I'll show you a little bit more watercolor. Let's pick this yellow. Little dip in the yellow a little dip in this grassy green blot and let's put it out here it's not going to look exactly like the boating party but it's similar um it's actually a similar color scheme And then one thing, the last thing that I want to show you um, in this video is just a little nod to, I'm going to blot up. When you see bubbles, you know that you've got kind of, and I did that because I got bubbles because I was going really fast, but you know you probably need to blot those up because you've got a little too much liquid on your paper. But a little nod to the boating party is to make one thing off color scheme, which was the boating party. They use a little bit of red and pink to create a focal point on the baby and the mother. So I am going to make the ball red for fun, just as a little nod, because the ball is definitely the focal point <laughs> of this. I might make it a little bit brighter. 
We'll see. You'll see in the final video. Which is actually the first video. So it's like you traveled in time. There, that's a little bit brighter. And I'll blot it. All right. Thank you.